Next story on AIB Skybox is hard to describe in a few words. Yes, it's a story about a young lady who's won gold medals in the Special Olympics for rhythmic gymnastics. Yes, it's about her dedication and drive and her family's steadfast support. It's about her dance instructor who first told AIB about the story. And it's about the lives she's touched along the way in pursuing a dream and living life to the fullest. AIB's Audrey Galex reports. Once a week, Elena Weaver puts on her dance shoes. Week after week, Elena joins a ballet class at Vista Grove Dance Center in Decatur, Georgia. She's working to perfect her moves, her balance, and as she bends and stretches, she's inspiring all of those around her with her mere presence. People always talk about disabilities, and they talk about it sometimes in a negative way. And I think Elena is very special because she has a dream to be the best person she can be. And her dreams, supported by her family, her dance instructor, and the extended family that is her church community have taken her to great heights. She's a gold and silver medalist several times over in the Special Olympic Games in Georgia in rhythmic gymnastics, competing at level four, the highest level in the Special Olympics. She's also a gold and silver medalist in the World and National Special Olympic Games, competing in 2010 in Athens, Greece. It was, it's always been a complete shock because I never know if I'm, how well I'm going to do. So each gold medal really makes me smile because I know I did that well. Elena's father, Ed, is her coach. When we started gymnastics, we started in artistic gymnastics, which is one apparatus. Um, and when she began, she couldn't walk on a, a, a four-inch beam that was two inches off the floor. She could not get one foot in front of the other, and she ended up competing level four in artistic. Um, and then got really interested in rhythmic gymnastics. And as she's gotten older, um, it's not a good idea to continue the strenuousness of artistic gymnastics. But you can um, be involved in rhythmic gymnastics all your life. So this is a life sport for her. And when he started coaching her, he didn't know much about it. Um, well, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of other people coaching me as I coach. Um, and uh, I did gymnastics as a youngster, but this is more about um, what she's involved in now is rhythmic gymnastics. So it's really about dance. Uh, there's a lot of dance involved in it. Um, and because it was a way for us to stay connected um, and do something together. It's been a journey of the spirit, her mother, Linda, says, of going beyond, beyond what the doctors told them was conceivable from day one. Elena was born with multiple birth defects. Uh, she wasn't supposed to live, and then she was only going to be a vegetable. But as uh, her parents, we decided when she was little that we wouldn't tell her all those things, that we would um, give her everything she needed medically and then start trying to figure out if she had dreams. And when she started dreaming at about 18 and saying, Mom, I think I want to do this and I want to do that, then we started making it happen. And once Elena started dreaming, she never, ever wanted to give up. No, no. Just knowing what benefits I can get out of rhythmic gymnastics and ballet keep me going. Well, I have physical problems and overcoming them with the body control, that's, us, that's my main big priority. Yeah, but if, if you looked at her toes, the toes lay on top of the feet, and yet she was an artistic gymnast and did beam and uh, 
vault and bars and all those things and couldn't even balance well. Um, but again, we didn't seek traditional therapy. We sought dance therapy, uh, uh, the athletics through Special Olympics. We wanted her to be in social situations. Uh, we wanted her to be having fun, to have goals. Um, and physical therapy and OT, well, I know some wonderful people. It doesn't give them the same thing. At first, her dance instructor wondered how Elena would fare in a class with other dancers. I was concerned, I, I won't deny it. Um, she's had to overcome quite a few things, but it doesn't stop her. Um, when we first started, um, she, we gave her a specialty part in our Aladdin ballet production. And she was doing ribbons with the, with the rhythmic gymnastics. So we let her do a ribbon dance in the ballet, a uh, little two minute bit. And then I said, well, let's let her do some of the walk-on parts. And she did that. And then the next thing I know, she's doing the chorus parts in the back. And now she's dancing with all the girls. So she's really worked her way up. And uh, I think it's, it's a joy. Elena is also providing joy in other ways. She's a mainstay of the liturgical dance troupe at Briar Lake Baptist Church, and she's also part of the congregation's sign language and special needs chorus. With my choir, there, uh, there's about 50 of them, and they're all special needs adults, and they don't sound so great. But one Sunday, uh, one of the guys said, Miss Weaver, we don't sound very good. And one of the other guys said, we sound like the angels. And I said, you absolutely do, because we as humans hear you with problems, because we ha don't have the right kind of ears. But God hears you perfectly. Elena is also doing the work of angels three days a week at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta at Eggleston. Well, the first thing I do is the parking deck. I fill in the vouchers that would tell you I parked at such a floor. Then I go up to day surgery and to clean the dirty toys. Then I'm back down here I do things like mail, delivering that to um, the patient rooms. I'll deliver gifts from the gift shops to the patient rooms. Um, and on Wednesdays, I deliver a sheet of fun activities for the kids to do. And um, that's pretty much what I do. Jan Lavender is head of guest services. I don't know what we would do without her. She can do just about anything we ask her to do, and she's always willing. She comes in that front door. She will ready to go. She delivers flowers and mail. Uh, she escorts families to the emergency room or children that can't find their way around. She'll help them. Um, she stays at the information desk all day with us. Uh, she has other little tasks that she does throughout the day, but she's become a very important part of our team. And why do you do that? Because my mom encouraged me since I've been in the hospital, since I was born practically. She said, why don't you try and be at the other end of the bed? Because you've been in the patients, you've been where the patients lie. Why don't you make them smile? That, that kind of encouragement. And it's been hard, but sometimes I can make the patient smile, and they do the same as well. And I love to hear Lainey's stories about her struggles. And it really takes you, gives you a deep breath and think, wow, because she has come a long, long way. And to hear the struggles and obstacles she's overcome and she still wants to come and work and do for others. It touches my heart. Faith, say her parents, Linda and Ed, is their touchstone. The Lord, that's, that's the inspiration, it's the place to go. Um, and 
The other point of inspiration is it's hard not to be inspired when you live with a miracle 24-7. Yeah, she's a miracle. She was never supposed to have been born. Uh, she shouldn't have lived past her first year. We were told that she would be a vegetable, that she would never have a, a normal life, um, that she wouldn't be able to walk, she wouldn't talk, she couldn't communicate, she would never be able to express feelings. Um, and that's what you, what you see, yeah. From day one, I mean, she wasn't, again, there is no way we can make it without our faith. She has her faith, we've made very sure, without telling her what to do, to put her into the position where she could learn. But um, faith is the cornerstone of our family. And um, I am a breast cancer survivor. In the middle of all this, and you know, an advanced stage breast cancer survivor. And Lainey, when she was little and in the hospital all the time, I always spent the nights with her. And when I had to be in the hospital, she said, Mom, you did it for me, I'm doing it for you. And so she was there. So it's that, that uh, real family. We always knew, and today I know still, I don't know if she'll wake up tomorrow morning. Her health condition is such that she may not be here tomorrow. So we made the decision that we would give her every bit of life that we could, and we never wanted, when the last day came, we never wanted to look back and say, I wish I had. I don't, I don't think I will ever say that because I know we did everything we could for her. I live a very God-given life, and I'm very honored to do so. It is a story of going beyond. A father and a church music director who became a gymnastics coach. A mother and paralegal who became a choir director. A dance teacher whose classes became therapy. And a young lady whose special needs created a special bond and taught the lesson that anything is possible. I'm Audrey Galix for AIB Skybox.